I adapted. I had mm. to learn how to adapt. Wow. So that was like the main thing I learned. So I, I would not say I'm set in my ways. Mm. I'm definitely self-aware. So I can know like some things that I don't feel like compromising on, but I understand not everybody sees things the way I see things. Mm -hmm. People have different experiences. People have different backgrounds. I have to be able to adapt. That's beautiful. Welcome to another episode of the Work and Play Podcast. I'm your host, Ariel Young, and I have the wonderful Cincy Shallery here to join me to talk about her journey as an entrepreneur. You like how, you like how, like how I do that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so, would you mind introducing yourself? Yes. Yeah, so, my name is Sensi Shari. I'm a financial consultant by day. And I'm also, well, I like to refer to myself as a creative entrepreneur. And I started a podcast called Secluded Thoughts, where I talk about how to take accountability of your life and become the best version of yourself. Mm, secluded. Why did you go with the word secluded thoughts? Honestly, it. I delayed the podcast for a while because I couldn't think of a name. Okay. And the reason I went with secluded is because it pretty much means like private. So these are like things I would think about like as I was maturing and getting more self-aware mm -hmm. and I never really talked about it with other people and I never had those conversations with other people because I feel like sometimes we keep that part of our growth to ourselves mm -hmm. and I wanted to just start a platform mm -hmm. where I was honest and transparent about my growth and hopefully it would resonate with somebody else. Yeah. I think that's really good. And now that I ask you the question and you give me your, your response, I, there are some secluded thoughts that I have never <laughs> like shared. And yeah. I think like when we think about our career, we we don't always trust ourselves or we feel like we're overthinking things. Yeah. But we very very rarely reach out to somebody for like that help. So they just remind exactly. <laughs> remain like well, I think, I think, I think, I think. <laughs> and they remember, they stay secluded. Exactly. So in your podcast, do you explore thoughts that you've never shared and like ways that you've overcome that? Absolutely. Um, I am um, pretty much. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, how are you just going? You're trying to get a feature presentation on the show? He wants to be featured. He wants to be part of it. But um, basically, yes. So I pretty much kept a lot of, that to myself but I noticed that as I'm talking about it more on the podcast and I'm being more transparent mm -hmm. some people even my friends are telling me like like I feel like you are talking to me mm. like I've been through this I've experienced this but I never really said anything yeah and then I'm like wow so we are friends we're going through the same thing and none of us are talking about it yeah because I don't know, I just feel like certain things we just we just keep it to ourselves. Yeah. We don't really talk about how to take accountability or times when you overthink, times when you have no idea what you want to do with your life and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people we've all been through phases in our life like that, but we don't always talk about it. So and when I listen to different podcasts and I hear people share their stories some parts of it resonate with me and I feel less alone in certain things. So I feel like I'm obligated to share my experience because mm -hmm. especially considering how young I am, I feel like it's very common for people my age to you know, have certain issues like some of the problems I talk about, sometimes not knowing what you want to do with your life, yeah. feeling like you have to have your life together by 25. Mm -hmm. guilty <laughs> right guilty same and, here and <laughs> so yeah i just i just wanted to have dialogue around that and yeah. i was tired of keeping it to myself mm -hmm. and so i was like you know what? i just have to put it out there and a lot of people have been resonating with that so that's, that's beautiful yeah that that's really what keeps me going you know, it keeps you going, but <laughs> homegirl, you are young. And I remember when I was 24, so now that I'm even about to say this, I'm like, Lord, 
<laughs> but it's coming out <laughs> because it's it's really like admirable that you're mm-hmm. kind of taking responsibility for like sharing your secluded thoughts for other right. young professionals who aren't necessarily as brave mm-hmm. but then also thinking about your professional journey as young as you are how has it been like making your way as a financial consultant like that's a big name to carry yeah the thing is so initially i had no idea what i wanted to do with my life mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. but i liked accounting so i thought oh you know let me do that and then when i was studying accounting i thought i was going to go into audit I, I just I randomly picked something because you don't, you, don't, you don't have experience about some of the things that you think you want to do when you're right. in college mm-hmm. it's like trial and error but you don't know that until you get into the trial and you're like oh, oh there's an error this no <laughs> so I thought I was going to do audit and it was a no for me mm-hmm. then I thought I was going to do tax I worked for a company that helped with tax preparing and I was like also no no (laughs) and this is in the course of um, how many years you went into school thinking you were going to be yes so this was pretty much throughout college honestly Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. accounting is such a broad thing like you could study accounting and you could go out and do a lot of things you can get your cpa you can do audit you can do tax you can do consulting you can do okay there's a lot of things and so you were exploring the field right. of accounting. Exactly. Okay. And it's, you know, like I said, trial and error. And then I landed on what I do now. And basically, I pretty much fell into my career because I'm, I'm definitely an overachiever. Like, I, I'm an overachiever. <laughs> So when I had We're no idea, probably. when I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, I said, "Okay, what's the best accounting firm? I'll find something in there." And so sophomore year, I made it my mission to work for that company. And then I got recruited. I signed up for a conference, went to the conference just to learn about the company. Mm-hmm. In the conference, I got recruited as an intern, and then I got an offer before I started my senior year. So I checked the box. Yeah. So that's pretty much how I landed in what I'm doing now. And I like the fact that it allows me to tap into my analytical skills. I always, I liked accounting because I always thought I was very analytical, very logical. Mm-hmm. I love working with numbers. So it was, it, it just fit, it just fit. Yeah. But I pretty much had no idea what I wanted to do. So I just, I started with a firm, but with the podcast, it's like the issue there was not knowing what I wanted to do, having ambition, but having no direction. Yes. And these are things that a lot of college students deal with, but nobody talks about it. Yeah. So it's, it's that secluded, thought aspect nobody Mm. talks about struggling and not doing what you want to do right because some people fortunately for them I've always envied those type of people in college some people just know what they want to do yes they just know it's like ever since you were like 10 years old you wanted to be a doctor Mm -hmm. med school yes some people just knew Mm -hmm. I was not one of those people (laughs) (laughs) I was not one of those people but that's a real problem that people have, and we don't talk about it because we don't want to be a failure. Right. I worried about being labeled as a failure and not knowing what I wanted to do. So, you know, like these are the type of things that I talk about on the podcast, just real issues that we have. And I share my experience. You know, I, I don't really claim to like know it all, mm-hmm. but I share my experience and how I may have gotten over something because yes. I know if I struggle with this, there has to be at least one other person. Who's also, yeah. And good. if they can resonate, then... You've done your work. Exactly. That's beautiful. Exactly. <laughs> 
Before we get into this episode, I know you've been struggling with the idea of starting your own business and launching a premium product that you know is gonna transform lives. So I have a bomb resource for you. The man himself, Words Taylor, is going to help you launch your product or service for the clients who need your help right now. Now you can't call yourself a business owner unless you are getting in front of new clients every single day, and Words knows exactly how to do that. All you have to do is tap in so he can teach you his six-figure launch strategy that's produced over $5 million in client sales. So all you have to do is go to highticketlaunchsecrets.com. That's highticketlaunchsecrets.com and get into the free training. It's happening this week. So go to highticketlaunchsecrets.com and let's get into the episode. On like one of the topics on your on your podcast, do you often talk about the experience being two years into a financial firm mm-hmm. like as a consultant and some of the challenges that come with that? I actually don't talk really? about my job or work at all. Why not? I, <laughs> I don't because it's. I feel like it's very specific. It's accounting, and it might not resonate with everybody. Mm-hmm. But what I what I try to focus on is a shared experience right. that. I could have with someone else mm. around something that people don't always talk about but it's something it's it's kind of like a hump that you have to get over mm-hmm. to be the best version of yourself or just yeah. you know be more self-aware stuff like that yeah so whereas it's so like with the example I just gave I got my job before graduating and all of that, but the struggle was not knowing what I wanted to do. Right. So the struggle is what I'll talk about on the podcast, mm. not necessarily the work and the mm. job. Mm-hmm. Um, but also with what you just said, so I, I just released an episode about the imposter syndrome, mm. and that's something I struggle with on my job, like yeah. self doubt and the imposter syndrome. Yeah. Because like we were just talking about as a financial consultant to you know leadership in my firm when i just started i had to report to the partners on you know the finances of the work that they're selling and as an analyst you know straight out of college that was very intimidating yeah and i knew what i was talking about but i questioned myself a lot so the questioning and the self doubt that's what I'll talk about on the podcast, not necessarily the work. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> because when I think yeah. about secluded thoughts, when I was 23, so similar, got my job um, out of you know junior year of college, so senior year of college, I'm like, oh, yeah. I can get whatever grades, but like, <laughs> similar, overachiever, so you know I had to get my all A's. Exactly, same, same, same. So it's like, when I got into corporate, self-doubt you know that definitely hit me it was a secluded thought of mine yeah so even though we're not talking specifically about the crunching up the numbers we're definitely bringing in some of those like present day thoughts that may seem or may be secluded for others and you want Mm -hmm. to like vocalize them for for people to hear exactly like it's it's just about being genuine yeah you know i feel like especially with social media like generally speaking Mm -hmm. it's a highlight reel people post the best aspects of everything but we do struggle with self-doubt we do struggle with the imposter syndrome we do have these little hurdles that we need to get over in order to do whatever it is we want to do or to just be in alignment with what we feel like we need to do yeah and i feel like there's not always a lot of conversation around that but it's necessary you have to get over these things to you know do whatever you want to do so I just when I was in the middle of some of these obstacles some of these hurdles I wished I had somebody to tell me that it was going to be okay and not only that but you are not alone a lot of people struggle with this too yeah so now that I've gotten to a point where I'm more optimistic and more wise more self-aware I I almost feel obligated to be that voice for somebody else that's beautiful (laughs) have you ever had um, a strengths assessment done I don't think 
So I did Myers Briggs. Yeah, Myers Briggs is pretty one. much it. Okay, it's it's that Myers Briggs is good. It's a personality assessment, um, but a strengths assessment, and it tends to lean more corporate anyway. So I wouldn't have been surprised if you did. But one of the strengths that it speaks to is responsibility, mm-hmm. and sometimes you just hear responsibility come out, and what you're saying is like mm-hmm. taking that responsibility for someone else's growth, someone right. you may or may not know. Um, it's just kind of in, innately in you and so like the wins on the team somehow we take on a certain responsibility kind of similar to how you explain your role as a financial advisor kind of like even though you're not the one doing the project mm-hmm. you have the responsibility of going back to the partners and saying hey this this is going well or not. I wish it was going well <laughs> but yeah. unfortunately um, and then also the way you speak about your listeners and your mm-hmm. responsibility for their growth. Like, that's a kind of a nuance, the way that you explain it. I'm curious to know where responsibility would be on your top 34. It's just one of those things. I probably have to take it because I never looked at it that way. I just wanted to empower people, I guess, mm-hmm. to, like, take accountability and, you know, just get over some of these obstacles. But that's interesting. I never looked at it as... You'll have to send me a link to tell I will. I definitely will. I now definitely. I'm, I'm interested now. I, I'm I really curious to know what will come up for you. So we're going to put a pin in that. We're yeah. going to do that. So you're um, two years into your corporate career. You're yeah. also exploring entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. So what did you... So you said you, want, you, you, thought, you, you thought you were going to be an um, accountant, right? You mm-hmm. knew you wanted to be an accountant when you went to school. But what was growing up like? Because we didn't really hear that creative part that you were able to like, how were you able to tap into that creative side of you? So, you know, I I always thought I was a very logical, clear cut numbers person. Really? Right? So I was like, accounting just makes sense. Mm -hmm. and And I loved accounting in school. A lot of people hate it, I loved it. Yeah. So I thought, okay, naturally, whatever I want to do with my life, since I don't know yet, it's going, it's going to involve numbers. Mm. But what I realized when I was, I think, maybe 12, was that there might be a creative side of me too. How did you find that out? So it's funny, and I think, I think that's really where my whole entrepreneurial thing started so I used to play this game online called doll war Hmm. and it was like you would dress up these dolls I was 12 (laughs) you would dress up these dolls and then they would like not battle each other it was like a a vote who has the best outfit oh so that was the war got it fashion war oh I had my mind was going so No, it wasn't. It wasn't like that. (laughs) But basically, there was a forum for the site where people would have um, signatures, like just in the forum. Like you make a post and you have a signature and it's a picture. Mm. And basically, so how it started off was just like every other game, there's items that you can buy, Mm. like with the it was called doll coins Mm -hmm. and then there's nicer items that you have to pay real money for right I was 12 (laughs) (laughs) that was not going to happen Mm -hmm. so my mom would not have given me her card to buy doll clothes online so in the forum I noticed that people were creating these little shops where they would design a signature for you and you would pay them in the, the doll coin so they can get clothes to buy outfits for the dolls really and i really i just there was this there the the clothes you needed like money for it was just so much nice and i was like i want that <laughs> gotta, gotta figure out how to get I, that i want that yeah so i was like this is it this is how i get it so i created a store and i was designing graphics people would put in the order they would tell you what they want on their signature and then we created. I started off with paint, so I would create the graphics, and they would pay me in doll coins. And then my outfits were like fire, like I was winning every doll battle because I had the money now. I, Are you kidding me? 
I was like 12. I started off with paint and then I taught myself how to use like, I think it was called Paint Shop Pro and then Photoshop and GIMP. So I taught myself how to do graphic designing because I wanted doll coins. We have to see some of your designs. Do you have any of them? I actually do. Okay. I actually do. It's it's somewhere, you know, it's the... Okay. Yes. I don't know if it's going to come across the screen right now <laughs> or if we're going to just going to click the link in the bottom. I'll, I'll, I don't have like the initial ones that I started with paint, mm -hmm. but I have some of the ones that I use Paint Shop Pro for, which it, it was like a cheaper or free version of Photoshop. Okay. So I eventually got really good at graphic designing. And then I was like, you know, I want to be a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. That was before accounting because at 12, I hadn't taken any accounting classes yet. Yeah. But still, I was like, logical numbers. Numbers. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. But then, so yeah, it, it started off with me wanting to be a graphic designer because I taught myself the skill from just videos online. And some people would like make posts in the forum teaching you how to design graphics. Mm. So I used to read it and I taught myself how to do it. And then from there, I was like, I like being creative. But it took hours. <laughs> it took hours. And I was like, it, it's taking me hours to design stuff. Yeah. I, I like it, but I don't enjoy it that much. Yeah. So from there on, like, that's where the creative side started. Okay. And then I, I started making websites. Really? I think was you went from twelve to how old making websites? Fourteen. Okay. And so, what were you trying to think about? So the thing is I wasn't making the websites to post any like special content. I just wanted to design. Hmm. So I was just making these websites, designing the themes and everything. I didn't publish anything on it. I was just making the design the websites because I wanted to design it. Okay, because so essentially like you had a bunch of templates. After right. When you were done with it, you just have templates with like no yeah. real like content on them, but they just look cool. Exactly. That's and then cool. eventually I made a website that was very embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was the content. And the funny thing is I keep all of this stuff. That's why I still have the graphics. I keep all of it because I just like to look at the progression and say, wow, that that. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> like, I made a post about some crush that I had when I was, like, 13. It wasn't even a substance. It was, like, I like to design, and I was, like, let me start writing stuff so I can see how the fonts and everything play in. So I, I had, like, a little online diary talking about Chris Brown and mess. <laughs> which, which really, the funny thing is, it parlays into secluded thoughts, right? It does. And in hindsight, I looked at it and I was like, wow, mm -hmm. there's a lesson here. Mm -hmm. Because everything I learned up until that point, I have used it in my business. Mm -hmm. The like the graphic designing led to making websites. The websites led to making blogs. My blog in college was my first business. The top three responses that I get when I ask, why do you want to leave corporate America? Are that you want financial freedom, you want to own your own time, and you want to build a legacy for this generation and generations to come. Now, this is not a solo job. In order to transition from your nine to five into entrepreneurship, it's going to take community and it's going to take resources. And I've created the community of pioneers who are going to wrap around you and help you make that transition successfully. So if you're interested in leaving your job, go ahead and click that information below. Let's get into the community and let's transition from your nine to five into entrepreneurship successfully. Now let's get back to the episode. Mm, so tell us about the blog. So the blog, so I was still on this whole thing of creating websites, blogs, and then the, re the way the blog started off, I went through like some kind of pivotal moment in my life where I was in this program, I was surrounded by a lot of ambitious women, mm. and it like, it lit a fire inside of me. I was like, I like this. I need to be around more people like this. Mm -hmm. And it started making me think about becoming my best self. Like, that's really where it originated. Mm -hmm. So, I was just feeling so good in that moment. And because I, I got my first 
got my first scholarship in college through that program and I also did I think I did something about public speaking and interviews and I was terrified I was actually very nervous for this interview because <laughs> that it was just so out of my comfort zone but it was allowing me to step outside of my comfort zone and it like changed me and I felt really good and I was like I need to blog about this yeah so that's how it started initially it was like a hobby blog and then I thought about how I could just help people because mm -hmm. I just like helping people so I made I was in college at the time and I made a post about college like the best college tips I could get because I had I, I had a 4.0 GPA mm -hmm. and I was like how can I help other people with this mm -hmm. so I gave out like the best tips I could on college and it blew up what was the name of the um, blog it was called the metamorphosis the metamorphosis yes that's and that's why the name came out too because I was thinking I was thinking I was like metamorphosis it's like a butterfly you know the cocoon the but I was mm -hmm. like this, this, this is it this that's the name so I I made that college post initially it was me writing personal growth stuff kind of like talking about what I talk about on the podcast mm -hmm. but I was in college and I feel like it may have been too deep <laughs> For your college comrades, they're like, what is she talking about being your best self? <laughs> it may have been too deep. It didn't resonate at the time. It didn't stick. Mm -hmm. But when I made the post about improving your grades and stuff like that, shut up. Yeah. Initially, I was like the only person reading my blog. Because I could see it. I have Google Analytics. It was mm -hmm. like, oh, you have one reader. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> when I made the college post, it blew up. Wow, what did so blow it up look like back then? Because this was two thousand, like what four or five years ago? Yeah, just about. So that's what two thousand sixteen. Probably, probably because I graduated in not, maybe seventeen. Okay, I think I don't even know. But two thousand seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So it was about uh, seventeen, sixteen, seventeen. Because when did you graduate? I graduated in nineteen. Okay. It was the year before, so probably 18. Okay. So around 17, 18, end of 17, 18. Okay, so you're trying to enlighten your classmates. I, I, <laughs> you're trying to get, drop some dimes right, on them right. and drop some gems on them. And you write this post that's more practical to their experience and it shot up, right? Yeah. So what did Google Analytics say? Like, how, what, were, what was the jump in terms of numbers? So basically, when I was writing about the personal growth stuff, it was me <laughs> one reader <laughs> then i probably had let's say five posts out okay for personal growth one college all of a sudden i go to google analytics it's like you have a thousand people it's like it's all come again all of a sudden all of a sudden and then i still wrote some personal growth stuff after that because I was, I was really pushing. I was like, no, we need to, you know, we need what to just do? be so enlightened. Yeah. Zero yeah. traffic. <laughs> Zero traffic on those posts. Okay. But the college one, it essentially went viral in the time because I monetized my blog off of that. Like, mm. it got me to 25,000 views in a month. And that was like the only post people were reading. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay. Let me try doing some more, more college this thing. Yeah. Blew up. Wow. The most it has ever gotten, I think, is almost 300,000 views a month. Wow. Readers. College. That's so interesting. Okay, so college. the first article you wrote was about tips on how to get a 4.0. Mm -hmm. And then, what? How did you start getting content? Because you're already in this like per, like this personal development yeah. lane. You could think about this all day, right? So, how? What was your process to come up with like articles about college stuff all the time? So I, and, and this is a lesson I learned. Initially, I was being stingy, and I didn't want to invest in the blog because I was in college. I was like, I gotta pay for tuition. Mm -hmm. You know, I did. I, you know. But eventually I bought a course and it taught me SEO. 
So just search engine optimization. Nice. So basically, like teaching me how to make posts rank in Google and how to find topics based on what's ranking in Google. So that's how I source what topics. I looked at what was ranking. I studied the domains and everything. Like I learned all of that, and then I just blew up the college blog. And it was strategically. Yeah. Pretty much. So you knew. So your process was, one, learn about SEO, and now I know what specific topic they want to hear about, Mm -hmm. so I'll learn about that, and then you started to figure out what titles do I need to go for, and then you wrote from there? Yeah. Okay. So was it pretty easy for you to think about, okay, well, they want to, like, the highest search thing is finding lunch cafeteria food or saving on a budget or something like that. The the most popular thing was actually decorating your dorm. Decorating your dorm. Was that one fun for you? It was, because... I, I lived on campus, mm-hmm. you know, while I was looking for, and that's how I monetized it with affiliate marketing nice. um, with Amazon. So I would recommend dorm products, put an affiliate link. And it was fun for me too, because I mean, I was shopping for my dorm. So yeah. it was all relatable at that point in time. I was in college. It's easy to write about yeah. college content. And I figured out how to make it profitable. And then I stopped even writing the content. I was outsourcing. That's so cool. To, to like, other college students? No, not other, other college students, but to, like, um, Fiverr. <laughs> Copywriters on Fiverr. Cool. I was paying, like, $30 to make a post. And with ad revenue and affiliates, it was making, like, a couple hundred a day. <laughs> a day. <laughs> so you're in college. You stumble on a blog. You, your idea... And here's the thing, here's what's interesting, is because we get so tied into the vision yeah. that you didn't necessarily get, I mean, I'm sure it made you a little bit like, oh, y'all don't want to hear this personal growth, yeah. but you pivoted, and then you kind of, <laughs> I see like, wow, <laughs> I'm trying to put y'all on, so then you pivoted, and then you're telling me in college, by the time you pivoted, you let go of the vision for, for then, at that point, mm-hmm. and you started netting a couple hundred dollars a day, mm-hmm. even outsourcing the mm-hmm. articles. So was most of your money coming from affiliate marketing and like other ad revenue? Yeah, it was only affiliate marketing and mm-hmm. ads. Only so affiliate it was marketing. only Amazon affiliates mm-hmm. and ad revenue. Because when you get um, a certain number of views on your blog or website, you can join an ad network and they pay you higher CPM, so like for every thousand views. Cost per mail. Mail. Yeah, so every thousand mm-hmm. the M four and basically like initially I had Google AdSense. I was like, do y'all want me to be poor? <laughs> <laughs> they paid next to nothing. Mm. But I joined um, this ad network called MediaVine, and they, it was a lot higher. So the college stuff was really taking off. So. And I, I, I learned how to market it on Pinterest too. That was like my main source. Well, Pinterest and Google, because I learned SEO. The only thing is SEO takes a while, mm-hmm. but when it starts ranking, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's mm-hmm. sustainable. Mm-hmm. So with the traffic and everything, it was making a lot of money from ads. And it was passive because just come to the website, it makes money. Mm-hmm. And the affiliate marketing too. So it was like, it was work in the beginning, but then it's just it was done. smooth sailing after that. Okay, got it. But so because d- I didn't, um, sorry, but no. because I didn't like, the, the thing is the blog came to an end because I didn't, I never intended to write about college. <laughs> I pivoted because that's what people wanted from me. That's what they expected. And it was doing well. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll give the people what they want. And I did it for two years. Okay. It was, you know, it was really, it was a great experience. Again, mm-hmm. it didn't, it didn't fail. It just wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. But I learned a lot along the way that I'm applying to the podcast. Yeah. I started outsourcing to Fiverr because it started training me to write about college. Because mm-hmm. that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then even more so after I graduated, because I sold it this year. Mm. earlier this year what was that like oh sorry to let keep, I'm, <laughs> I'm so I'll, curious I'll tell you about it <laughs> so the thing is after, after you graduate you don't want to talk about college right so yeah. 
that's I started outsourcing it. I knew what was trending. I dorm stuff. You don't necessarily have to be in college for that, because even Amazon has like shopping lists for college. You can just repurpose that. But I wasn't in college. One, it wasn't what I wanted to do. It was never what I intended to do. Mm-hmm. Two, I wasn't in college, so it wasn't relatable anymore. It's like I have to let it go. Yeah. I have to let it go. So to answer your question on selling it, basically I was just going to let it sit and die out. Okay. I did not know you could sell blogs. Mm. Because my thing was the all of the work I had put in to create the content and outsource, join the ad network, put all of the affiliate links. It was now making money passively. I didn't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. I could just wake up and see how much money it made yesterday from ads or affiliates. So I was just going to let it die down. I was just, well, I don't know what to do with it. I don't want to do it anymore. It's too much time. It's draining now. I was going to let it die down. And then on Pinterest, I saw a post from another college blogger who sold her website. Mm. So I contacted her and she put me in contact with a blog broker. Oh, wow. I did not know that existed. This whole world. <laughs> there's, a whole, there's a whole world in blogging, honestly, that wow. you don't know about. I didn't mm. know about. So there's this blog bro- broker, and she's amazing. So I just I went to her website, it's blogsforsale.co, and um, I just filled out this questionnaire. She asks you basic questions: How many views? Why are you selling? Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. And she gives you an initial esti- estimate. Okay. And she gave me. I, I was just like, you know what? Let me just see. I put it in. She gave me an estimate. I said, excuse me. <laughs> what was the estimate? Now wait. At this time, before we get the estimate. How much were you said a couple hundred a day? You were bringing in a couple hundred a day passively. Mm-hmm. But so, much, so how much was your annual like college income? So it really kicked off like right before I graduated. Mm. But basically, I would say what happened was in the first full year when it was actually a business, the first six months I did not invest. I was trying to do everything on my own, being stubborn. Mm-hmm. I invested halfway through the year, thereabouts. Mm-hmm. I took the course, I went through it, okay. Okay. The next six months, it made $10,000. Okay. And then the next year, that almost tripled. Mm-hmm. And the great thing was, it was all passive. Yeah. I, I was already working my full job, that oh, my full-time were. job. What were you working as? What I'm doing now. You were, okay, got it. So, but in college. In college, I, did I? No, my senior year, I didn't work. Okay. But I was just in a lot of, like, extracurricular programs, okay. stuff like that. So maybe that. it was bringing in a couple hundred bucks a semester. Yeah. yeah. So initially, okay. um, yeah, initially it was just a lot of hard work in, mm-hmm. at the beginning with no return. Mm-hmm. But I liked, I genuinely liked it for some time. Even mm-hmm. if it wasn't what I wanted to do, I was actually helping college students. And I had built an email list and everything. They were emailing me about oh your tips are so helpful thank you so much i was like Mm -hmm. thank you you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it kept me going for some time but yeah i would say most of the money was made like towards the end right before i sold it okay so she gave you the estimate yeah so initially when she gave me the estimate i was still more or less active on the blog so i was still promoting it on pinterest sending out pins to get traffic and all of that the initial estimate was 52,000 for the blog I said excuse me (laughs) I said so let's talk about the process (laughs) where do we begin (laughs) where do we begin yeah yeah um but yeah so but the thing was because it was a higher price Mm -hmm. it took a while to sell Okay. And the thing was, I, I, I'm not even kidding you. I was completely drained from the blog. Okay. So I did not work on it at all. Okay. Fortunately, it was still bringing in passive income. Okay. Because it was ranking on Google for a lot of keywords. Mm-hmm. That's passive. I don't have to do anything for that. Yeah. But because I wasn't posting any pins, I wasn't doing anything, the traffic dropped. Okay. When a traffic drop, you earn less. The estimate is based on um, your average monthly revenues and stuff like that. Okay. So it sold for less than fifty. It 
it was still a very good price. <laughs> Five figures. Right. Yeah. It, was, it sold for less than 50. Um, not that much less. Okay. I know you want to give us the number. I know you want to just let us know. It sold for 35. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so all this, so, so just so that you guys know, these college product projects can be very, very lucrative when you get yeah, a product there. So that pays back a lot. Now, because what school did you go to? Georgia State. So you went to Georgia State. So you yeah. probably got out of college with a hundred k, fifty k of debt. If that, did you have a scholarship? No, I got. I had twenty something. So you literally could be debt free. I don't know what you did with your money. Did you end up paying back your loans? No, I, <laughs> I paid off two of them, but um, I, you know, I honestly, I wanted to see what Biden was going to do. I was like, no, you, you, that's true. If you forgive it, I was like, I have it covered. Right. I'm going to just keep this little. <laughs> I paid off the private ones okay. and I basically I'm using the money that I made from it to invest in the podcast because nice. the podcast is not monetized yet, but mm -hmm. I genuinely love it. But it's like. I like the fact that I have that cushion because I, I keep I keep it in my business account. Mm. Like I have the LLC and everything set up. Like I don't co mingle funds. I just business is business. Mm -hmm. So it will be reinvested in the business. Yeah. So I like I, I I chose not to like blow it or anything because I want to I don't want to use my money from my job mm -hmm. to do it. If I have to I will. Yeah. Because that's what I was doing initially anyway. But it's like I just wanted to keep it separate. Um, but with the block sale, that was the easiest thing I've ever done. And I didn't even know you could do it. So basically, the blog broker, her name's Chelsea, she has the buyers. You just apply to have it listed. She finds the buyer. She facilitates the transaction. Mm -hmm. She has the escrow and everything, the contracts. Mm -hmm. I just had to send over the files. That was it. Wow. She did everything. What was her percentage? What was her percentage? I think it was... I think it was 20%. Okay. But she did everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. That's awesome. I, I listed it on her website, and she just kept in contact with me. So mm -hmm. I was working, living my life. I did nothing on the blog. And then she just sent me a message. She was like, we have a buyer. Cool. Was it on, like, WordPress or something? My blog, yeah. It because, was, I like, use WordPress. Okay, nowadays, so nowadays we have, I have one on, like, um, Medium. But, like, with Medium, mm -hmm. I couldn't run that same play, right? I, I've never heard of Medium. Medium is, like, I can't even tell. It's, like, a hub for blogs. Okay. So like it oh, you know, I have heard of Medium, mm -hmm. but I've never used it. Well, it, I don't know if you can monetize it the same way. Like, they have their own paywalls and their own oh, really? ads and stuff, yeah. And so, you know, you just write a blog and it ends up on their site. But you don't know what happens afterwards. This is a much better way. Yeah. And as much as you say it was easy, it took a lot of work on the front end. It did. That, that's the thing. I Nobody understands. Unless you actually had a blog, you probably really don't understand the amount of effort. Yeah. And especially, I was in college, too. So it was like, go to class all day mm -hmm. and then work on my blog up until the morning sometimes mm -hmm. and then go to class the next day and try to do stuff in between initially it was a lot because i didn't know what i was doing i was figuring out everything on my own it got easier after i started investing okay. and that was a big lesson i learned i'm not now i no longer try to figure things out on my own if there is a course if you're telling me you're going to let me know take my money yeah take my money <laughs> <laughs> take it yeah, you, you waste so much more time trying to figure things out on your own. If yeah. somebody's going to teach you and save you hours, days, months, mm -hmm. give them the money. Yeah, you will make it back. Thank you so much for watching the Work and Play podcast. This episode is sponsored by the Boss Up Conference, which is a community for entrepreneurs, CEOs, celebrities, and corporate executives to come together, network, and solve some problems. Thank you all so much for being supporters of the Work and Play podcast. And thank you for watching the Work and Play podcast and all the episodes before. Now let's get back to the episode. So now that we are at this place in, in your story where you've tapped into your creative side a little bit, mm -hmm. um, you, you're kind of in a space now as an adult where you're, you have your logical side and you yeah. have your creative <laughs> side. So do you feel like you're at a, a sweet spot, so to speak? Absolutely. Um, and that's the thing. I, I never 
I never want to put myself in a box. I was doing that at first. I felt like, okay, you're logical, just be an accountant. Well, so, no, I'm creative too. I want to do creative things, you know? So I feel like I'm in a sweet spot now. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I really like it now, but like that's, that, that was my one thing. I'm not going to limit myself. I'm not going to put myself in a box. Mm. And the thing was, like I just told you, it started off with me wanting to be a graphic designer. Right. Like, you can look at it from one perspective and say, okay, well, you failed in these things. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I didn't fail. It was all stepping stones. What, whatever skills I learned from this, I brought it into this. Yes. And so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I just give myself more grace now. And I say, okay, if I have an idea to do something and it's not... I don't take literally every idea, but sometimes it's like, you know, because, you know, you have a podcast. It's like, sometimes you have an idea for something and it won't go away. Got to execute. You have to execute. Mm-hmm. So that's just basically what, I, what I've what i been doing. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> so then when you think about, so now that you're kind of your not even kind of your your entrepreneur bag Mm -hmm. life is good on the financial analyst uh advisor side Mm -hmm. life is good on the podcast how do you see yourself marrying the two in another form because this is only the beginning right i think um i'm probably going to keep doing what i'm doing in terms of like if i have any struggles with my job or something Mm -hmm. and it's really because of an internal issue, like self-doubt. Let's make an episode about that. Mm. People can relate, you know? I don't necessarily want to start like a financial podcast because I feel like, you know, I started accounting, but I work in finance now. But I'm like, finance is what it is. I have that part of my life, Mm -hmm. but on the creative side with the podcast, my whole intention there was to just be genuine and talk about how to take accountability and let's you know have some genuine dialogue about some of the things that we all go through Mm -hmm. but we don't always talk about yeah so i just you try to compartmentalize i actually do because it works better like that for me because believe Mm. it or not when i'm at work i'm like really focus because i like when i'm at work like that's how i thrive at work okay like with the numbers and the analysis with some of the things that i do i have to be focused really sometimes i i depending on what i'm doing if it's something that doesn't require me to think a lot you know i can listen to music in the background but when i'm working i need to be focused it's like very serious i am one of those people i just i don't do well with being distracted while I work Mm -hmm. so me in work mode is like everything off but like me in podcasting I'm like so guys let's talk let's relax it's like almost two different people I was gonna ask you that so so because of that do you think your co-workers would hear your podcast and be like who is this and do you think your listeners would see you at work and be like who is this absolutely (laughs) how do we match the two do you ever do you have a desire to like merge the two well the thing is i think i'm very adaptable okay so even though i'm very like laser focused at work i understand the importance of you know talking to your co-workers you know having some kind of connection with them, right? Mm -hmm. To make the environment more fun. Now, I'm still working from home now, but when I was in the office, it's like, we did take breaks, we did talk, and I really like that, and make the workplace more fun. But when you see me on my laptop, don't bother (laughs) me. It's like, I will get up and I will make the time, oh, it's a lunch break, you know, let's talk, let's, okay. Listen, I have a meeting in 15 minutes. Don't no. bother me. No. I need, if, if it's something where I need to focus, yeah, I yeah. need to focus. And you like it that way. So let's I be do. clear. Like I thrive like that. Okay. Now, if we were to do a 360 feedback session, right? Do you know okay. what a 360 feedback is? Not really. So it's like, so with my clients, I'm like, depending on what they want to do. So typically, they're going from employee to entrepreneur. So they're mm-hmm. in their... In their 
corporate role, they're a financial analyst or advisor. I keep saying analyst, but advisor, and they want to do, um, they want to go into podcasting full time, or they want to become an entrepreneur of some sort, but they don't know what their professional brand is. So mm-hmm. a three sixty review is essentially like, okay, if I were to ask my coworker, what would she say about my character, my work, my work <laughs> ethic, and then the output of my work, right? Mm-hmm. If I ask my boss. What would they say about my character, my work, you know, and you ask them that same. You get a holistic picture of the type of person you are. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious if they would be like, so one, a surprise that you have like this secluded thought side of you that Mm -hmm. like one is like, oh, she has a podcast. That's so cool. Or would they be like, yeah, I knew there was a cool side of her, but she's able to balance it at work. Honestly. (laughs) Honestly. So (laughs) tell the truth. Shane the devil. (laughs) I feel like I some things I don't talk about at work. Like I don't necessarily get too personal at work. Mm -hmm. I can get personal. I we can talk whatever, but I don't necessarily get too personal at work. So if if my coworkers were to listen to my podcast, they would learn about a completely different side of me. The, the side you don't see because when I'm working, I'm working, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm working. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, and I think if the people who listen to my podcast had to watch me work or be in, an, in that environment with me, they'll be like, who's this person? Yeah. Because if I need to think, I don't want to be distracted. Okay. Like so- I will go somewhere and work by myself. All right, so now I'm curious. <laughs> Take me to a day in the life of the financial advisor. So, like, what does is it a nine to is it nine to five? Yeah, Are you, I was nine to five. Okay, so you wake up in the morning, mm-hmm. you do your personal stuff, yeah, and then you you are in the zone for work. Okay. What does the day look like? And and even don't leave out the parts that you really enjoy. Even if it's like yeah. I'm on a spreadsheet for three hours, and I'm <laughs> like, tell us, tell us, what is it like to be a financial advisor? Honestly, with what I do, my days are typically very unpredictable sometimes. So it really just depends. So if it's a day where I have fire drills, like we call them, mm-hmm. it's funny because when I first said that, I thought, why are you having a fire drill? No, it just means I need you to do this now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> like yesterday. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'll be like, I look at my calendar to see if I have any meetings that kind of tells me what I have to do that day or how it's going to go. And sometimes I look at my calendar, there'll be not much on there. I'm like, all right, nice chill day. I know what I have to do this week. I can get it done. I can log in and somebody will ping me and be like, this is urgent. I need this done. What is this? This like pricing. Okay, so pricing. I help price out some of the work that we sell. Okay. So um, like I was telling you, so I work directly with the partners and the senior managers assisting them with basically financial advice around the work that they sell because it's a service-based firm. Mm -hmm. So when we price it out, it's like they will basically tell me this is what the project is about. We need this many people and these are the roles. So like it's a manager, consultant. So they will tell me. So if they're trying to sell work during discussions with the client, Mm -hmm. They need the pricing done immediately. Mm-hmm. They need to know what it's going to look like for the firm before they sell the work. So <clears throat> if they're in discussions, I will sign in and be like, I need this pricing done urgently, like, like right away. So then I have to do that and let them know mm-hmm. basically if it's profitable or not. So because of the nature of what I do like that, sometimes when I get requests, it is it's very urgent. And it's serious. It is. So if you're in the job, and tell me tell me at any point that, that I describe it if I'm wrong. Okay. So, <clears throat> <laughs> so we get into work. Yeah. We're like, oh, today's going to be a yeah. smooth day. No meetings on my calendar. Right. Um, hey, Sensi, we literally are about to sell XYZ product to XYZ client. Mm-hmm. They send a whole rundown of an email. Like, we got 10 managers, three, this, yeah. that, this. And then they want to install this type of software. This is the type of work. This is hours. 
can we get a pricing analysis? Yeah. So you go straight into like, all right, no, 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 you don't listen no to headphones. You no like music. Everything is off. I need to. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and so you start thinking through like, do you have like a spreadsheet of like what the the, the items that you that you're calculating cost, and then you bring it into a spreadsheet and do an analysis? No, we have um, different programs built out for that. Mm -hmm. So I just have to put the numbers in. Um, and then let him know what it is. Mm -hmm. But the thing about pricings is like basically, it's never set in stone the first time around. Mm -hmm. There will be a lot of revisions mm -hmm. because in initially when mm -hmm. they're pricing our projects, they don't. You may not know exactly what the client needs. You're still finalizing. So as you're finalizing, the resource, the staffing mix is going to change. Okay. So every time it changes, I have to give an update. We need to know. So sometimes it's like, you know, I'll send off a pricing. It doesn't take me long to do now. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm very good with it now. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll send off a pricing. I know if I get a pricing, that's just urgent. They're trying to sell work. So sometimes I get a pricing. I'm, I'll send it off. I'm like, all right, cool. A few minutes later. So we need two, we need three different scenarios, and these are the different mixes. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. You know, keep sending off. But the thing is, if it's if it's pricing until the work is sold, yeah, or abandoned, it's a couple of iterations. Exactly. Okay. So for <clears throat> that, it's like I need to focus. Okay. I need to focus. Yeah, because they're big tickets, and are the exactly. are the tickets in like the millions or the hundred thousands? Typically millions. Yeah. Millions. So I the way it works, I'm staffed on a specific client, mm -hmm. and. That client is a really big client. It's a global client, mm -hmm. so we um, generate a lot of revenue from them. So the work that I work on specifically mm -hmm. is typically a lot. There's a lot of visibility, mm. so I need to focus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to focus. So yeah. So thing is, you know, I I come up for air. Mm -hmm. Many. It's harder now when you work from home, but. Like I also talk to people online, but it's you know it's still very distant. Yeah. Because it's virtual, but it's harder now since we work from home. But when we were in the office, it's like okay, let me work. Okay, we're good. I send this off. All right. So how was your day? Got it. <laughs> I like that. Well, hey, yeah. now you have this you know very calm spirit about you and of course we all notice your accent yeah. so like where what's your upbringing like because and the reason i ask is not just about your your um accent even though i know like it'll come out like your upbringing but your ability to go into these environments that may or may not be high stress right mm -hmm. they're huge ticket items you said you have to focus mm -hmm. you even you even like the work yeah. so like what are the values that kind of lead the work that you do that allows you to say like this is the focus it's not like you know <laughs> this is how I know life is supposed to be made like what was your upbringing like so I grew up in St. Lucia um, I moved here when I was almost before I turned 17 um, and basically everything was completely different when I moved here when I say everything, I mean everything. The first shocker was the climate, obviously. Because <laughs> it's like, hot and cold. Right. It's never like that back home. I, I remember the day I moved here, when I got on the plane in St. Lucia, it was 90-something degrees. I had to take a connecting flight to Miami and then Atlanta. But by the time I landed in Atlanta and I was leaving, it was midnight. I remember what and it was... November when I came. Oh. I remember walking out of the the doors at the airport, like vividly. Like, you know when you vividly remember something because it's traumatizing? Yeah. I remember the doors open, the wind hit me, and I walked right back inside. It's like, no, no, no. How old was, are you? I was almost 17. I was 16. But I checked the weather. It was 10 degrees. That was like the year I think Atlanta had like the snow apocalypse. Oh wow! That's when I came, 2013. Wow! So it was 90 degrees when I left, 
that morning in yeah. St. Lucia. Yeah, you did not. <laughs> it was 10 degrees. Oh, my And goodness. the thing is, growing up on an island, we don't, they don't sell winter clothes. No. So you could have put your whole case on. I had a t-shirt on. on me and, like, a jacket that my mom got from... I don't remember, but she had been to England, so there was, like, a, a, a jacket that she had lying around. But it's like, I remember that day she went looking or the day before she went to town like looking for boots and stuff for me but it's like we don't sell boots you don't need boots <laughs> yeah. on an island no so i was not prepared physically mentally spiritually <laughs> <laughs> it was so cold i walked right back inside but everything was different so i one of the things it taught me was i had to learn how to be adaptable so that's why I told you, even when I work and I prefer to be focused and yeah. not bothered, yeah. I understand I have to talk to people. Mm -hmm. I can't just be set in my ways. Moving here, the biggest thing I learned was how to be adaptable because everything was different. And also, like there was um, miscommunication issues sometimes because I was speaking more Patois and I didn't know I was speaking Patois because I was so used to it. That's just how I talk. Hmm. And then also, um, I think it's because so Saint Lucia is it was is is British and French, right? But what I realized, and I, I, I would have never known this, but what I realized was some some things we will refer to it using the British name, okay. But in America, it's something else, okay. So like for example, paper. That's like the the one example I can I can remember. So like with the paper, we call it file sheets. That's oh. what's on the, the the packet. It's called file sheets. Wow. So I remember I was in high school and we had like a <clears throat> pop quiz and she said get out some paper, notebook paper I think. And I asked someone next to me, Do you have file sheets? And she was like, No. So and I didn't have any else. I was like, okay. Two seconds later, she pulls out file sheets, and I'm looking at her like, <laughs> "These Americans be lying." You just said you didn't have it, and then I was like, "Can I have?" Oh, she was like, "Yeah, sure." I was like, "So why did you tell me you didn't have it?" She was like, "Oh, you mean notebook paper?" I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, you're 16, 17, and yeah, and I'm like, "Why would you just lie to me? There, there was no reason. You could have just told me no." <laughs> I was like, why would you, why, so it's like, that was one of the things, it was like miscommunication and stuff like that, but I adapted, I had mm. to learn how to adapt. Wow. So that was like the main thing I learned. So I, I would not say I'm set in my ways. Mm. I'm definitely self-aware, so I can know, like some things that I don't feel like compromising on, but I understand not everybody sees things the way I see things. Mm -hmm. People have different experiences. People have different backgrounds. I have to be able to adapt. That's beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what it was like. Actually, you just told us what it was like to be a kid. And to know that the doll story happened in St. Lucia. You were like a little businesswoman <laughs> like before you ever even got here. So like to have a financial advisor job... Yeah. Um, even and even be able to have this outlet, secluded thoughts, to be able to yeah. think through even the things that we don't know as young adults. Mm -hmm. You have a really good mix of like being able to find yourself, but still maintain this very serious side of yourself. Yeah. For that, that sounds very very sustainable. Yeah. No, like I said, I I just I don't want to put myself in a box. Mm. I used to. I used to feel like I had this is how I am. I have to be like this or I should be this way. It's like no, I'm a multifaceted person. There's different parts of me, there's different sides of me. One maybe some are stronger, but it doesn't have to overpower everything else. I can cater to other people. Yeah. And in terms of stress strength assessments. Yes. I actually mm -hmm. took it wasn't a strength assessment, but it was more like a we call it business chemistry at my job. Okay. So I took a test like that, and it, 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 it honestly, it taught me so much. Mm. It taught me like there's four different work types okay. of people. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Myers-Briggs, but I feel like it's 
more accurate and it doesn't change. It's it's just amazing. Tell me so, more. So what's your word style? So we my like profile this. is guardian driver okay. guardians that's just the name of the different mm -hmm. so Avatars. the guardians mm -hmm. are the people who like structure organization you know like to-do lists mm -hmm. stuff like that drivers are people who are straight to the point mm -hmm. like no hello good morning text how are you what are you doing today like yeah. just straight to the point emails mm -hmm. no heading no subject no like no signature straight to the point yeah i am a mix of i'm almost 50 50 on those two but then there are other people who are integrators these are the people the person, subjects they, like, the ma they, they, they matter they, want, <laughs> they just want to talk to you they want to connect with you right they just want to know how your day was doing you know like be a person please tell me about yourself these are the integrators <laughs> And then there are pioneers. These are like the big thinkers. They like they the opposite of guardians, basically. So it's like they will have an idea and they'll just run with it. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the details. No, care They're about the other big people Big picture. Either. So it's like that assessment taught me so much about people, mm -hmm. and I use it to up uh, to interact with people every day. Mm -hmm. So it has made me so much more self-aware and. I just use it all the time. I may not say anything, but when I interact with people, I can profile them and see how they are. And I'm like, okay, you are the self-aware one. You know about these four avatars. If this person is this and it's the opposite of me, I have to adapt. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to connect with them, trying to communicate something, I have to be smart enough to put it in a way that they will receive it. Not necessarily how I want to say it. Right. I have to do it how they will receive it. Yeah. Because in hindsight, I remember when I was the president of an organization on campus, me being a guardian driver, structure and straight to the point, I had to lead a meeting. So the meeting was at 8. It was 8 o'clock. I was like, okay, so the first item on the agenda, mm -hmm. the integrator was like, can we do an icebreaker? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, we got business to take care. We have an hour. We, we 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 labored over picking a time that works for all of us. And you want to, you want to play games? What are you talking about? Oh my gosh! You want to play games? <laughs> you we have play an hour. We have things to do. But I had to take a step back yeah. and be like, okay, okay what's the icebreaker? <laughs> That is so funny. So now I I have to apply I apply that all the time. Yeah. You know, I and I was telling you earlier, I tend to listen more than I speak. I observe people. So I'll let you talk, see what kind of person you are. Mm -hmm. And if I feel like you're an integrator, I'm like, okay. <laughs> we need to talk more, Sensi. We need to talk. They want to connect. Say something. Yeah. Don't just jump right into the point. Like That's I would so be, like I would instinctively want to do. Ask them about their day, please. Just ask them about their day. They want to talk to you about their day. Just talk to them about their day. <laughs> you know, I, I, so I have to tell myself that. So that's something I use to like talk to people and connect with people. I try to figure out which one they are and I will tailor my approach and my communication style to them. Yeah. The funny thing is that's also how you approach your podcast. Because the way you talk about it, yes, I, I, I create really this thing about that. Yes. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Ariel from the Work and Play Podcast. If you're getting any value from this channel, and I mean anything from the tutorials to the podcast to the random videos that you see on this channel, then I just ask that you do one thing. Please subscribe. Subscribe and share this to anyone that you think this resonates with and drop a comment below so I know what other things that you want to see next. Now let's get back to the episode. I, I love this podcast, one, because I get to talk to you because I'm get to like connect with you even mm -hmm. for a moment. If you don't feel like you're my sister, for a moment I feel like you're my sister, I get to connect <laughs> with the people who are listening to your story. I'm like, how did you like her story? What did you connect with? I'm so curious about how they resonated with you. Yeah, It's not my responsibility for what they get. Yeah. Their growth from this is not necessarily my responsibility, but I love it. I enjoy yeah. this, right? But the way you approach podcasting is yeah. like, it's my responsibility to share my growth. 
Absolutely. I want you to grow from this. It, yeah. That's that's guardian. That's I want you to hear. Um, I want you to take the of course the strengths assessment because I think yeah, I'm I, curious I how that will like yeah. align. But yeah, you you approach everything like that, and so for you, it sounds like work and play sounds like you're you're able to exercise all of those different areas of yourself mm -hmm. in the way that you want to exactly. whether you want them to merge or not if the people at your job need to know about your podcast or vice versa i think there will be a time you're like 50 and then like like there's a, <laughs> she's the girl behind secluded thoughts right yeah. <laughs> or or she's the girl behind like you know this is the i listen to this podcast every, let one of your coworkers be like, girl, you need to listen to Secluded Files. Oh, my God. You know, I thought about that one day. I was like, what if somebody comes up to me and they say something? But that was earlier on because I'm a very shy person. And even when I blogged, I did not put my face on the blog. It was all anonymous mm -hmm. at first. Mm -hmm. And I tried so hard to do that with the podcast. I did not even want to put my name out there. I was like, because I'm just... I and that's going to be an episode soon because I feel like not a lot of people have talked about this, but it's like the fear of being seen. Yeah. Some people can put themselves out there on a platform. Yeah. It takes a lot for me to do that because I just, I like my privacy. I just, I'm comfortable just being over here by myself mm -hmm. and not, you know, putting myself out there. Mm -hmm. But the reason I'm doing it is because I don't want to live a life that's, dictated by fear mm. I don't want to not do something because I'm afraid of something everything I've done that I was initially afraid of it never turned out as bad as I was expecting and I felt so much better because now I can cross that off my list I overcame that fear mm -hmm. so I feel like the podcast is allowing me to grow in that way it's forcing me to put myself out there but it initially when I made it like the the podcast cover art my I have a picture of me on there now. When I just made it, it was just the words. I tried so hard. I said, like, I'm not putting myself out there because I'm like, I don't want people to know it's me. Yeah. Because I knew I was going to be vulnerable. I knew I was going to have these conversations. I was like, do I want people to know my business like that? But then I was like, I have to. And not only that, because I, like I said, I'm an overachiever. From the outside, it just always looks like I have my life together. Got it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Like, there have been times where I was so stressed out over the blog, I wanted to quit. Mm -hmm. But you don't see that. You see how much I sold it for. You see that it, it helped me make money. You don't see all of the work. You don't see the times I wanted to give up. Yes, I had a 4.0 GPA in college. Do you know how stressed I was? trying to study and work at the same time because I had to pay my tuition. Like people, because I'm an overachiever, because I always try to push myself to do well despite my circumstances, you see the successes on the outside, yeah. but you don't see the struggle, the self-doubt. Yeah. You don't see that. It, like like with social media you see the highlight reels you don't see when people are struggling yeah so i knew i had to put my face on it because i know everybody in my life is looking at me like i have it together all the time yeah and then when you listen to the episode it's like i'm sorry you you went through what yeah you you have self-doubt like stuff like i'm like i'm a person yeah I, I I try my best to always put my best foot forward but I'm a person yeah so I knew I had to do it because of that I didn't want people to think I was perfect I didn't want people to know my business but I didn't want people to think I was perfect either yeah. you know I was yeah. like I have to do it I'm glad you did <laughs> I'm really glad you did I remember when I told you I have to also be aware of other people's personality because when I met you, I'm like, yes, I'm on the podcast. I was like, why would she not want to be on the podcast? I'm just, and I never considered, I never consider, I will be honest, <clears throat> until this moment, the, even when people express that, mm. I never really, really like. I'm just like, it's going to happen. And so 
one good things always happen yeah. but then it's always good to hear when good things happen for you you know overcoming your fears right because it's not just about me i have to like also recognize that that that's a part of my guest experience and this is yeah. actually like a you know a milestone it's it, i want to say ripping up the band-aid so mm -hmm. to speak but you know it's growth it's growth yeah. for sure so i just i'm going to be more cognizant of that i probably am still going to be a pusher because <laughs> i that's just who i am and i would love to be pushed in that way as well but thank you again for sharing yeah. your story i have one other thought and you know it's a ceremonial question but i'm not quite sure who you'll reach out to when we when i ask you because in the spirit of sankofa the concept the philosophy is to reach back to those you know who are on their way to where we are or on mm -hmm. their way to their journey mm -hmm. um, as we move forward right yeah. and so if you think about you know you're still on your journey you're you're just pat not even past the first uh quarter <laughs> century so you got so much um life ahead of you but then at the same time we live every day like it's our last so yeah. there's that but when you think about like reaching back mm -hmm. and then knowing what it is that you want to say to that old you or someone who's looking at you at the, the sideline, like, how does she do it? <laughs> What's that that um, word of advice so that they can learn how to find their balance of creativity and logic or whatever you find it is? I would say the biggest thing is to just be self-aware because you're going to get bombarded by so many different mediums like news tv family social media friends mm -hmm. everybody is going to have their own advice suggestions for you and your life and how they want you to live it according to what's comfortable for them mm -hmm. and what expectations they have for you mm -hmm. But you have to know what it is that you want and you have to lead with that. You have to live your life for you and not anybody else. Because for a long time I was trapped behind like living my life in accordance with what other people expected of me. And it was like misery. You have to know what it is that you want and you have to live your life for you. All of the people making suggestions about what you should do, they don't, they're not going to wake up in your shoes one day mm -hmm. and live with whatever regrets that you have for things that you never did because this person didn't say it was a good idea. Yeah. And, then, and also with that, nobody's coming to save you. Nobody's going to come and tell you, oh, this is a good idea, you should do it. You need to know, okay, if you feel really strongly about this, just do it. Even if it d doesn't work out, like with what I did with the graphic designing, it these things didn't work out, but they were stepping stones along the way. So sometimes you might have a great idea, it may not retire you, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a building block. It's it's a stepping stone. All of it is for a reason. Yeah. So don't look at it as a failure. Just think about what it was meant to teach you. Like just live your life for you and stop worrying about what other people think. Yeah live it for you and do what you want and it's going to be hard because we can also be our biggest enemies we can let fear talk us out of things but if there's something you want to do that nagging feeling will never go away yeah it won't mm. you can started the blog you went to college I had to shut it down that's not what I wanted to do and it's been holding on ever since exactly Ooh. it'll never go away you have to do it yeah you just have to do it. Forget about other people. Just be true to yourself. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. You know. I, and nobody, nobody, don't listen. Don't wait for anybody to validate the idea. Mm -hmm. Just do it. That's beautiful. Just do it. Be self aware. <laughs> be self aware. Well, there you have it. If y'all didn't get anything from that episode, Lord, I, I say this every time, but you need to go back and listen because that was a really good word. Thank you so much, Sensi, for joining me on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's a really big... Now I'm like, okay, I'm honored. I literally... I got, I got Sensi on the podcast. Look! So...
So if you guys resonated with Cincy's story, uh, whether you're listening or you're watching and you want to get connected with Cincy, how can they connect with you? I would say to follow me on Instagram at secluded.thoughts and also subscribe to my podcast if you like you know what i what i've said what i talk about if you just want somebody to talk about real things that we go through and then how you can take accountability for that then subscribe to the podcast at secluded thoughts it's on pretty much all of the major streaming platforms apple spotify stitcher um so yeah there you have it. Go ahead and get connected with her. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching. Until next time, peace out.